I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images and welcome to Splashing Out with Alcohol Inks. So this is our second one in our series of tutorials on alcohol inks and then this one I'm going to be exploring a couple of techniques for actually blowing the inks around and moving them on the paper. So we're going to start off with a piece of gloss card and I'm just going to pop some Clairo which is the extender on there first just to help the inks start to move as we put them down. And I've got Senorita Magenta and Baja Blue. So we're just going to put some drops there along there and some drops of blue. I mentioned in my last one that sometimes you just got to be confident and just put the drops on. If you're hesitant, it's when you tend to get splashes happening across. Now, well, you can use a straw for moving your inks around. And you see how that one colour moves into the next. A gentle flow will give you of ink. Oh, sorry, a gentle flow of air will make the ink move, move smoother. If you go more abruptly with the air, you'll get a sharper um, and splayed out version happening. Now, some people don't like the tendrils. They like, to, and I'll be doing some other tutorials where with, with more of a wispy look, where we don't want to get the tendrils. But for this, I'm actually quite wanting to get that splashing out look. The other thing that you can do is actually, I'm just putting on a little bit of alcohol there to get a bit more movement as well. Blow out and along into some shapes. That's the advantage of the straw. Now the disadvantage of the straw is if you breathe in without moving back from your work, you're then gonna be breathing in too much of the alcohol fumes, which is yeah, not that pleasant. So, and this is why Tim Holtz has come up with a new air blower. Now the one that I have that I'm going to be using today is the Distress Marker Spritzer which has actually been discontinued um, but this is what I've been using for a few years. But Tim Holtz has actually just come out with a new one that hopefully by the time this uh, video airs we'll have stock of the new one. We've got it arriving very soon and it's actually got a larger well, a larger blower part to hold the air and it hasn't got this bit in the way which can be a bit annoying sometimes. So it's got a large thing. So you just hold it in your hand and you can either do a sharp burst, which again, like the straw, will give you the tendrils splashing out. You can do a gentle, so I'm squeezing it as I'm moving it along and that gives more of a gentle movement on the inks. Or you can actually do just little, I don't know if you can see that, I'm just moving my hands just a small amount, just little puffs which gives you a little bit more control over where you're moving the ink. Okay, so let's actually pop this. What well, another thing I like to do when I'm starting to move inks around is I actually use a Lazy Susan. So I can actually very easily turn the card around from side to side to actually get that movement happening. So let's pop some more alcohol in and start doing some blowing around. So I can do some sharp blowing and get some tendrils happening. I can do some sweeps. Or I can just do some little puffs and just change some of those directions of the inks. Now the other thing that I want to add into here fairly quickly is I'm going to put in some of the gold mixative, the gold um, metallic. And this we're going to move around with the air as well. So let's add a few blobs of gold in there. Now I will be covering in another DVD, another DVD, and another tutorial, I will be covering using uh, some other ways of moving air around like airbrushing and hair dryers. But I have to admit, one, this blower is actually my favorite. I just find I have so much control over the movement that I can get. But we all develop, it's always worth trying other methods because we all develop our own our own preferences. So as you can see, I'm just laying down a little bit of the isopropyl alcohol and just moving that around. Now the isopropyl alcohol um, in the pinata range is what they sell as their cleanup solution. So all the pinata inks and the cleanup and the Claro extender are all available on our website. As well as, as I said, we hopefully will have stock of the new blowers soon, which I'm looking forward to playing with that because it will give me the bigger air um, receptacle will give me more 
movement that I can get. So where I'm getting a little bit of movement across the card, I'll be able to get a lot more happening. The other thing that it's got is actually the barrel is ribbed so that when you put it down on your table, it doesn't roll away on you, which is, Tim Holtz is great at thinking of just really practical features like that. Let's just keep moving around. So now if I have an area of the gold and a bit of alcohol to it, if I do a sharp burst, instead of getting so much the tendrils, what I get is more of a spread of the metallic. I don't know if Matthew can, hold, can zoom in on that little bit. You can actually see it's still moving. See how there's just that fine coverage of gold through there? So that's the sharp burst that spreads out into that. Whereas the more gradual, I can move it into more concentrated lines. Let's just put a little bit more alcohol down there. I'm gonna move it into that area. So moving from one side to the other, we can actually move that gold around if it stops moving, just add a little bit more of your alcohol. So I'm doing some little puffs there. And then if I want a bigger spread, do a sharper one. What else are we gonna tackle? Let's just do a little bit down here. Now I'm wanting, on this bit, I'm actually gonna give it a bit of a foof, get it spread out, and now I'm gonna just hold it up and let it run. And again, you'll see that beautiful metallic just moving through there. If we want it to run a little bit more, let's just add a few more drips of alcohol and let it move around. So you don't always have to use a tool for moving it. Sometimes it's just a matter of moving the card itself. But that one going out to the side there, I think we need to give that a bit of a smoosh, a bit of a smoosh out. Now let's just keep letting it run a bit. And turn it round and let it run back the other way. So this is where your metallics are so gorgeous to work with. Just letting that move through there. And you'll find with using a mixture of the alcohol and the claro, the claro gives you that longer drying time, but it doesn't, it keeps the vividness of the colour. Once you start adding in some of the alcohol, you actually lift off a little bit of colour. And so you start getting, even if you, even if I was just using pink, I could get more depth and more lighter areas by what I'm using as the mixative and how I'm moving the ink around. Okay, so that's just some basic moving of the ink and with the metallics. What I want to show you also, if you're using a lot of the Claro solution, it tends to often your work dries a little bit tacky, particularly where you've moved the inks around and got some thicker piles of ink with the Claro. It actually goes a little bit tacky, which we can use to our advantage. So I'm just gonna bring up a piece that I've already created and let dry for a few minutes. You don't want it to dry completely. So this is when you can see I've got lots of dark. I've just been moving this one around the same with the the blower tool, I was just blowing it around, but I was working mainly with the Claro, less with the alcohol, and just the Claro to spread it. So we've got the colors are still really strong, but we've got this little bit of tackiness. I'm now gonna get a piece of foil. And putting it dull side down, we just lay it on there, and if I haven't let it dry, <laughs> I've let it dry too long. Oh dear, okay, I'm gonna come back to our, uh, let's just add a few drops of Claro on there and let it move around a bit and then we're gonna come back to that. There's me thinking I was doing a great thing by getting things prepared ahead of time and that I've actually given it too much time. Let's add a little bit more of our teal color in there where we've got that Claro. Move it around and create a few lines. So this time I'm actually mainly using uh, the blower to move the air, uh, move it, moving the blower at the same time as blowing out of it. I hope that makes sense. So that I'm actually not just doing sharp bits, I'm actually moving it into these stronger lines. A little bit more of our teal there. So teal is one of the new colors in the pinata range. Just beautiful. Let's 
Okay, let's leave that sit to dry for just a few minutes. Not too long at all. And this is another piece where I'd already put the foil on. But what I've also done on this one is I've come in with a glue pen. So the Zig glue pen, which is your one with your roller ball on the end. And all I've done with it is actually, let's add a few little bits in on this one. All I've done is just got the roller ball and just giving it a bit of pressure every now and again for a bit more ink, <laughs> more ink, more glue. And other areas I've just sort of flicked it out or wiggled it to make it go finer. Now when it first goes on, it's white. And now if I stuck something to that now, it would be a permanent stick. But if I leave it to dry for a few minutes, it goes to a tacky glue. And a tacky glue is what you want for foil. So let's see, I'm looking at where I've actually put the glue on there. And when we lift off, you'll see the foil has stuck to that glue. Now I wouldn't, I've put it onto the one with the, that we put the gold color on. I don't usually do the gold foil and a gold ink on the same piece. I've got one here, another one here where I was playing. So it's got um, actually some copper ink, it, copper alcohol ink in there, plus the gold foil. And I just feel the two metallics fight each other a little bit. So I, I prefer to have just the foil, either go foil or metallic, not using them together. Sorry, Matthew, I'm moving that all over the place on you, aren't I? There we go, there you can see. So you can see the gold of the foil is really overpowering the, the copper in the background. But this is quite effective where we have a bit of background foil and then we do some, some lines where I've put the, uh, the glue pen on. Just press down and see if there's a few more bits that I did. Nice over that way. Okay, let's hold that one up so that you can see it for the camera. And you can see those lines coming through. I love that. I think the using it with the glue pen is such a good effect because you have got you you've got a fair bit of control over it, but you actually want to make it look quite random even though you've got control. But you could also add little dots, which would be quite special as well. Now let's have a look at our other piece and see how we're going, see if we can get away. It is a difficult one, this one, with when is when is the, the ink dry enough that you're not just going to put, um, just smudge the ink everywhere, or as you saw before with me, when it's too dry and it no longer picks up on the foil. Now there I've, I don't like that where I've got an edge showing to the foil. So I'm gonna come back in where I've, I can see that I've already got some ragged edges there. And if I just press that bit down here, it'll help to break up that line. So now we've got more of a patch, we haven't got a solid line. You can also actually scrunch your foil up and just dab it on as well and you'll get uh, a more spread out, um, I don't even know what word I'm looking for to describe that. Um, sp splashed out look? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can let me know in the comments if you can think of a word that describes that rather than, it's a less solid, less solid look. Less. Oh, I don't know. We're just having fun here. I'm just gonna come in with it scrunched up again for a moment and just dab in and see if there's any other areas that'll pick up on a bit. is enough. So you can just see what fabulous effects you can get with that. Now I probably went a little bit heavy, this might not have been quite dry enough. As I said, it's a really difficult one to know when it's just the right time. So that's often where the glue pen is better because you know once that glue pen goes tacky, it's just gonna stay tacky for however long you need it. So personally, I actually prefer 
to do the lines with the glue pen. Um, I really love that look. And you can just go along where you can see lines in the patterns that the inks have created and actually build out those. So just showing a difference between working with the foil or working with the, let's move that around till we get the right angle that the camera picks up on the metallic. There we go. Really pretty looks. So just, you know, a lot of things with, uh, particularly with alcohol, I mean, we say in, in, with our paper crafts, there's no right and wrongs with how we're doing things. There's no, those techniques with the foil or the metallic, neither one is better than the other. And you might find that you do some color combinations where you really like using some metallic first and then putting some foil over the top. Uh, maybe using some of the gold, but using a mother of pearl foil or something like that, go with something that's quite different. Um, it's really just about having fun and experimenting and um, yeah, go for it, okay. We'll see you for our next, uh, and I'm trying to think what we're doing in the next one. We're gonna be playing with alcohol inks over the next couple of videos. So I'll see you for the next one. Thanks for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, bye.